What brought you to Grand Valley, Dick? How'd you get started in this? Well, I was uh, with Channel 13, and uh, Jim Harkema was the head coach uh, back then. This was in 1976, and they had that great victory against Northern Michigan. And uh, I kind of fell in love with the program, and I left Channel 13, the idea of going to Chicago. And uh, instead, Don Thomas called me and wanted to know if I was interested in start, uh, starting a broadcast network for Grand Valley. And uh, I thought, well, it'd be fun to do, you know, and, uh, do that, and then I'll go on to Chicago. And we got it all set up where we got a radio station to carry Grand Valley football and basketball. And then we needed an announcer, and, and uh, so they convinced me to do it for a year. And uh, then after the basketball season, I'd go to Chicago. Well, I never got to Chicago. <laughs> I just stayed. <laughs> That's great. What is it about calling a live game, you know, that game atmosphere that, that still excites you even to today? Well, I, I think it's a storytelling aspect of it, the idea that uh, your audience basically isn't there and try to make them part of the audience that is there. And the only way you do it is to be excited about what you're seeing. And uh, so I've always had that, uh, 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 not ability, but uh, the, the flair to say, be excited, you know, be happy with what you're doing <laughs> and with the story you're telling. You've covered hundreds of Grand Valley football games. Is there an outrageous moment, anything that, uh, that comes to your mind from all the time you've worked it? I could tell many stories uh, about outrageous moments. Most of them would involve the officials. No uh, way. You're kidding. <laughs> no, but there have been some great moments uh, uh, in, in the history of Grand Valley football, and uh, I, I think those moments would more stand out than uh, the negative things that happened. But uh, we sure have had our share. I've sent more officials to the John Ball Park Zoo <laughs> than any announcer in the history of broadcasting, I think. Talk about the uh, championship teams that you've covered. I mean, Grand Valley has enjoyed a run of success unlike anybody else in Division II. And what, what has that been like over those teams? Well, you know, I, my dream was always to be the announcer for the Cubs. I never would have a championship team, <laughs> right. even at this old age. But uh, at Grand Valley, it's been, uh, uh, it, it, it's been a growth, really. Uh, Back, uh, let's go back to 1978, I think it was, or 79, uh, when we got in the NAIA playoffs and uh, we won our first game. Uh, we played in Wisconsin and uh, cold, oh golly, it was cold, uh, but we beat them. And then we went to Elon, North Carolina and played in the famous Mud Bowl that people talk about where uh, Doug Woods was a trainer at the time and he had hoses on the sideline where he was hosing the guy's ears because they were filled with mud. I mean, it was unbelievable. And we lost that game 14-7, uh, to 7, I think was the final score. But that uh, was a kind of a championship team to a degree because they did make the playoffs. But then, of course, the era of championship teams at Grand Valley really started in 2001. Uh, Brian Kelly uh, was the coach. Uh, Brian had been that coach for 10 years, and uh, that 2001 team was a special team. He made a decision in 1999 that he had a great recruiting class, and he was going to play those youngsters. And we struggled in 99. We went 5-5. Five and five. The next year, uh, we started out horrendous. I mean, we were 1-4, and four, and everybody was calling for Brian Kelly's scalp, you know. Uh, get rid of this joker and uh, of course the Lakers went on and won six games in a, in a row and ended up with a seven and four season and then the next year uh, Kelly completely changed the offense he went to the spread to offense the spread. and he had the perfect quarterback to do it with uh, in Kurt Ains and Kurt Ains had that year of 2001 was probably the greatest year I've ever seen one individual perform on the football field Kurt was unbelievable and should have won the Harlan Hill Trophy that year. Uh, he was hurt in the playoffs. We still went on, which was a great job of coaching by Brian Kelly, uh, to take uh, uh, basically a walk-on quarterback and a wide receiver converted to quarterback and still get us to the championship game. And we were only minutes away from winning that championship. Uh, a broken play on defense, we missed a tackle 
set up a score in, in North Dakota beat us. Uh, the next year we came back, it was a completely different team. Uh, Cullen Finnerty had taken over at quarterback. He was only a freshman in eligibility. Uh, it was a team that was basically keyed on defense. Uh, and uh, it was a team that uh, ended up winning the first national championship. I take that back. Actually, that was the second national championship. The first one, Kurt Ains came back the next year and uh, led us to a championship. And then the following year, it was a completely different team. Uh, a new defensive coordinator was Chuck Martin. Right. And uh, we won that second championship. And then, of course, Chuck became the head coach. And uh, two years later, he led the Lakers to another national championship. And then that fourth national championship was unbelievable. You win four national championships in five years. You know you're doing it with different players. Yeah, they don't, their, their careers don't stretch out that long, you know. You sometimes wish they would, but uh, uh, it was a great time. And it was a great thrill for me to be exposed to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the, that period of time, six times, I was able to call the national championship game, which was a real thrill. For guys, young guys, uh, starting out in broadcasting, maybe they're at the college level, and they want to be the next Dick Nelson. They want to they want to be the voice of the Lakers or the Cubs, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. What advice would you give them? What, what would you, you know, tell it, them? it's it's a different world, and 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 I think that in some ways uh, we we lose it from the standpoint that. Most announcers now are based on television. And to call a game on television is completely different than calling a game on radio. On radio, you're telling a story. You're telling a story of what's happening, and you're trying to develop the emotion and so forth. In television, you're strictly backing up what the people are seeing on the screen. And sometimes I think what happens, the young guy starting out is more influenced by the television guy and he tries to do television on radio and that doesn't work. Doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Beyond technology, which I know has been a big part of it, but what else has changed? What, what are some of the other big changes for you in, in calling a game since the, uh, the, the first couple of years you did it? Well, it, it's changed a lot. I, you change your habits of watching a game. I, I mean, as you broadcast, uh, you watch a game a certain way. I, I, I sit home and, and watch a game on television and, and I, I uh, tend to watch it differently than I do when I'm broadcasting. Mm -hmm. I, I watch the game like most fans do, I think, but uh, when you're broadcasting, you're following the ball more. You count on people like yourself who are doing the color uh, to pick up the, the things that the that, that play-by-play guy doesn't see. Right, right. And, uh, uh, that, that part is uh, uh, really the same as it was years ago. Radio hasn't changed as much as television. The technology of television, of replays and, and this sort of thing, uh, that's not that, you know, uh, it doesn't affect the radio broadcast as much as it does the television broadcast. As a broadcaster, Dick, how do you define success for you and, and have you achieved that? Boy, I, I don't think you ever achieve uh, success the way that you want to uh, achieve success. I think it's a, it's, it's a thing that you, you work at day after day after day after day. And that's the secret, to work for it day after day after day. Try to get better. Try to see the game better. Of course, as you get to be my age, it's, it's a little harder to see the game better because the eyes are getting old. And <laughs> uh, but that it's still the idea is to try and get better, you know. It, it, it just as an athlete, it, it's the same thing you want as an athlete. You never, I don't care how successful you've been, you never feel you've really attained 100% if you are successful.